from the from the um, uh, taxonomy perspective i mean I, i'm interested basically in 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 all of the points but maybe the one that i would like to be more focused is on the capital markets taxonomy uh specifically in the bonds um I'm interested in equities as well, but I think I have an expertise on, on bonds, so maybe I can contribute more there. And then on the other groups regarding the obstacles and best practices. Um, I've seen I've seen a, an update on the taxonomy. I was looking at it this morning. Um, I'll, I'll I'll have a look to see how I, can I work with. Um, this program uh Maybe? that yeah because i haven't used it before so it's the first yeah, time for me the one that is used to do the organigram it's very it's simple uh i mean if you have any questions i can answer because i was the one who created that oh great uh so we wait for a few more minutes um I've started recording, so. Stan, how are you doing today? Hi, Vipin. Doing well. Just uh, apologies, I haven't uh, contributed much to this space, but I think about it, so I just uh, put a few thoughts onto the, started putting a few thoughts on the use cases page. Uh, yeah, planning planning to uh, actually work on it. Actually, set set some time aside uh, to work on this uh, today specifically after the call. So hopefully we'll have some discussion in. Uh, yeah, and um, I think the main points are that um, when we make even the taxonomy that we try to link it with. Um, with the use cases so that you know if we we let's say that you find a use case on private equity that we will link it to the use case specific to that private equity i'm trying to figure out how uh, gliffy can uh, you know i know that gliffy can have pop-up notes and that's how i just thought it would be best to uh, so I can create online when we are when we are all on. I can try to create a um, pop-up note on one or more of the uh, items, and then we can see how that would help us. Because all of this material can be found in other places, uh, you know, stuff about bonds, stuff about equities, and so on. But it's more about how can we unify everything. Um, anyway, I think I'll wait for a minute or so before I start the meeting. Um, being uh, the middle of summer. Good morning. Good morning, Bobby. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Um, we, I, I suspect that today is going to be likely attended because it's the middle of summer and people are. And also most of the um, people at Hyperledger are in Japan. I don't think about They're it. They're having the Hyperledger, well, a lot of the companies um, that are Hyperledger members were invited to that. So a lot of calls are made up of Hyperledger members, so they're all at the conference. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I don't know specifically about the uh, uh, members of our group of the Capital Markets SIG. Uh, it, it is possible that many of them are at, at, uh, at the members meetup in Tokyo. Uh, so should we start right away? Uh, and you know, just do with them with um, people who are here 
and then um, think about um, you know what's going to happen next week, next uh, next meeting, which is in two weeks. But I was talking to some people on. Uh, anyway, let let me go down the list. One, of course, is that we are. Um, can you hear me, by the way? Yes. Um, one of them is that, you know, we are um, operating under the antitrust policy uh, of every country. So if you do not agree with the antitrust policy, then you have to leave the meeting. Other than that, there is no requirements as far as um, the meeting goes, anybody can join. Anybody can uh, can be a member of this uh, group uh, and contribute. So, without more um, spending more time on all this, uh, we have a couple of administrative stuff. One is the um, fact that we are still looking for a. Uh, the vice chair, if anybody wants to volunteer, that would be a great thing. Uh, the only duties of a vice chair, as far as I understand it, is to take, up, take over when the chair is not available for a specific meeting. And also, if there is a, there's going to be an election after 90 days, uh, and if Anybody else wants to stand for the chair, they're welcome to do so. Uh, I plan to run, so we'll, we'll see how that, you know, basically it will be an open. Um, then- Hi, it's, it's, it's Natalia here, S -s sorry. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how you want to, to do this, but if we want to volunteer for, for the role, I would just, Say it now or send you an email. Yeah, you can say you can volunteer, and I can, you know, I can just note note it in the proceedings, and I can put your name up unless somebody else is volunteering. In which case, there will be an election. But I think what is important is whoever is volunteering has to be actively involved. Uh, that's that. I mean, actively involved in the sense that at least attend a few meetings. Uh, you know, out of let's say six or eight in the next three months, uh, attend uh, you know a, a majority of them. Other than that, I don't think there's any other requirement. It's, does anybody else want to volunteer, or shall we all say Natalia is the vice chair? What do you think, guys? I can uh, try to volunteer to be uh, the to pick up uh, if there's a call need to be led. I don't know how much I can contribute outside of the calls. I'll do my best, but uh, I can at least be the try to be the backup for the for the meetings. Yeah, uh, I mean, I was just uh, telling you. I mean, I don't know whether you heard me or not, but Natalia is volunteering to be the vice chair. Oh, great. Second it. <laughs> exactly. That's that's what I think. Uh, you know, uh, she's a new member and enthusiastic. And let's see, uh, you know, whether we manage to keep her interest. So uh, let's go down the list and uh, introduce ourselves uh, uh, and our interests our expertise in this field and why we are on this call and so on and so forth. Um, as mentioned by Bobby, many people are either away at Tokyo or um, because of summer, you know, people are taking time off. Anyway, Bobby, 
Okay, I'm Bobby Mascara, and I am the chairperson for the uh, Learning Materials Working Group here at Hyperledger. So I sit in on a lot of the special interest group calls to figure out if there's any documentation needs or just to help them with um, information about what's happening with the other special interest groups and um, just here to listen in and learn. Who's on next? Um, it is uh, Murali. Yeah, I can go. Um, my name is Murali. Um, I'm a part of the Hyperledger Fabric Maintenance and I have a strong background in both development and uh, architecture of uh, blockchains in general. My interest is basically uh, contribute from that direction, technical direction, as and when we get to the where I hope we will be able to start uh, some implementation and so forth. Um, and also, I have a, I'm a currently at State Street and have a financial interest as well. Uh, I come from basically uh, custody and uh, back end back end processing of uh, finance um, for non retail banks. And this this plays right into that as far as uh, as far as expertise and learning goes. So my interest is is from that angle as well. Thank you, Murali. Um, Hi, uh, let's uh, see the group. I'll read, uh, chain R&D. So coming from the capital markets, specifically with uh, exchange traded derivative space, have a lot of interest in uh, various use cases and applications of the technology. Looking to use this uh, SIG as a collaborative space to explore the, the, the appropriate use of the technology and uh, where some of the tech can be brought in to help in less expected areas. Thanks, Tim. Um, Natalia. Can you hear me, Natalia? Yes. Uh, so, um, I'm a capital markets professional on the debt origination side. Um, my work is basically called the, debt, the capital markets team, uh, where I originate um, debt from issuers um, around the globe. Um, my interest in, in the group is just to try to um, understand the business applications of uh, blockchain, specifically on the origination in debt, and also knowing um, the, the the best practices and other issues that, um, as a collaborative space, we can um, work out uh, with a view to implement this um, in my organization, and also, um, yeah, but basically how to implement uh, the the new technology into the organization. When you say origination, does that mean that you're basically involved in securitization of uh, or or being a runner for the uh, uh, you know yes yeah, so it so it's it's for i mean origination of uh, debt instruments for corporates and also financial institutions um so so basically it's just the origination that front front office job but also um i know about settlement mechanics and um documentation and liaison with um, custodians and, and and other parties. So if, if, I don't know whether sure you, that's clear. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know whether you got this or not, but Murali is uh, working for. Um, I don't know whether I'm allowed to say it, but he's working with State Street, which um, which focuses on the custody aspect and uh, settlement. Uh, I mean, uh, the custody and the post uh, post settlement aspects, like you know, probably the corporate actions, probably some other uh, you know uh, 
things related to custody. So there should be some interesting conversations there. Uh, so we should dive right into the, uh, you know, there was a poll taken of all the um, hours uh, of, uh, you know, which, which is the appropriate time. And more than 50% of the people have said that this particular time is good every two weeks. Uh, the only uh, people who said otherwise are the ones from the West Coast because it's very early for them, 6 a.m. Uh, so there are two things. I mean, either we go with the poll as taken or we say, okay, let's let's try to adjust this time to, let's say, 9:30 or 10 o'clock a.m., which is, which would be half an hour or an hour later than we are doing now. Uh, so I would like to know the opinions of people about that, uh, or we can just stick to the 9 a.m. time, in which case I think uh, people from the West Coast do not, you know attend. The problem is um, I, I got this as private feedback from people not, I mean, I suggested to them to vote because that would be the best way of expressing their opinion. And uh, I don't think too many people voted there uh, from West Coast. But we have uh, about 15 or 16 votes in total and at least 50 percent or more of the of that is about nine o'clock which is the majority so we are going to end the poll next uh, wednesday and i will communicate this to everybody i'm i'm sorry this is boring stuff but we have to go through this when especially when we are setting up a uh, setting up a new SIG. Um, now, in terms of the uh, projects that we have undertaken, uh, I mean, we have started, you know, we have five topics. The first one is, uh, uh, you know, taxonomy. I've done some work in there, and I'll try to share the work that I've done. And maybe somebody like Natalia can comment on how, you know, whether we need to have a slightly, you know, whether we need to rework, especially for the bonds. Um, the second group, I believe, is um, uh, on standards. And Oh, by the way, Money hasn't said anything, so I, I, have, I probably should uh, wait for him to introduce himself. And Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Manny Balai from Swaps Hub. Um, yeah, well, uh, last week I did, you know, uh, like a you know, brief introduction anyway, uh, uh, just as a rehash. Um, I run a company called SwapSub. Uh, we are, are working with uh, on the you know derivative side of things, on covering interest rate swaps, uh, equity swaps, and derivative for swaps. At the same time, we also work with uh, digital assets and uh, bringing in uh, auto management system because of our work we had other done work with other banks on bringing digital or uh, digital auto management system and a settlement system that brings uh, a buy side and sell side together to do digital transactions. So uh, one of the interesting things that we are working currently is a, a, a custody solution or more of a settlement solution and bringing in more of an institutional grade, uh, real time uh, or, or uh, more of a, what calls a hot wallet solution. Um, uh, but it is agnostic to the digital assets. Uh, if that's something interest to you know, participants, we can discuss more on that. Uh, we are also in, in discussion with SEC about our solution and, and we are you know, trying to get them to move on because there's a lot of uh, 
concerns from the regulators on digital custody. Uh, so that's a separate topic that, you know, if there's interest, we will move on, we will, we will work with. Um, on the data standard, we are a working group member of the STES EVMs, common domain model. Uh, that model uh, originally started with addressing uh, digital standards for OTC derivatives um, that started about a year and a half uh, back. But now, with, with the introduction of equity swaps and equities and repos and uh, security finance, the, the, the spec has grown pretty big and it now covers digital securities as well. So we 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 had uh, you know started off looking at other standards like PML and XML, uh, but to make it to make it uh, fit for the digital uh, the new digital world, uh, we had to um, make sure that it's not only a data standard, but it's also a business process standard, which is lacking in most of the other standards. So uh, that's something that I proposed in, in you know, uh, as one of the topics of the discussion. Uh, if there's if there's more interest, in, I'm more than happy to contribute there. Sounds good. Um, now. How should we proceed now? Uh, should I just share my screen and show the work that we have done in the taxonomy? Sure. Vipin, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, yes. I think I when I go away from the Zoom, it, uh, let me try to, okay. Now I can go away from the Zoom. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. So I'm going to um, share my screen. Hold on a second. I have to find my way around this uh, app. Share. Can you see the screen? Yes. All right, so I've tried to break it out, the capital markets into basically bonds, equities, and derivatives, uh, which is what you see here. And in bonds, I went into a little bit of detail here. So my idea was that, that I would um, put some kind of a pop-up on each one of these that describe them and also try to see um, whether we can put links to standards as well as to current use cases, especially in Hyperledger uh, based DLTs uh, in the pop-up. I haven't uh, attempted to do that yet, but that way we collect everything in one place and we are able to uh, easily look at each one of these types of bonds uh, this is the mind map uh, setting from Gliffy, uh, which, you know, there are some uh, places which need fixing, but uh, basically, um, you know, uh, Bobby, uh, please, yeah. Um, okay, so this Gliffy program, um, I tried to work with it before too, and I, I find it cumbersome in that, um, 
trying to link back um, in an ideal world, in my opinion, like for instance, the bond box, you'd be able to click that and maybe get to its own wiki page where we can store information on bonds. Is that functionality in here? Uh, that is what I'm trying to see whether we can do, meaning is there a way to make this a live taxonomy? The, see, uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm real, I, I'd have to play with the glyphy thing. I found it, again, not able to do that, so I just created pages for all of our sections. So I would put a big capital markets and under there have the three sections and then have them all pages down on an index on the left. Um, yeah. Because I don't know if Gliffy can do those pop-ups. So, uh, as far as I know, can, Gliffy can do the links, direct links, but uh, pop-ups are not really great unless they're static. So, would you link to another page in the wiki? Well, I think that's the ability that Gliffy would have. Yeah, but it could be it would be a, a link, uh, a page under the same uh, confluence space here. Yeah. So let's see what Gliffy can do in terms of the um, in terms of the uh, you know it it can definitely do pop-ups. I know that you know uh, because uh, and one, one 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 question here. And apologies to interrupt. Um, the purpose of the of the map is to have the information, um, basically definitions of what is a municipal bond or a class B um, common equity share. What, what is exactly the point behind this? Okay, so um, there are multiple pieces of information that would be available. One of them would be the definitions in a very, very short form rather than okay. you know, going into details. Um, like for example, let's say, I mean, for you, this is simple because you are a professional in the bonds uh, space, but we can start with just having the pop-ups on the equities and bonds, one which says equities, which says that it is an ownership interest and bonds which said it's basically, uh, you know, you're lending money to the institution, whatever they are, whether it's sovereigns, corporates, or uh, other governments like municipal or various other uh, things, and that you have a higher seniority in the debt process so that if the company goes belly up, your claims are at a higher level than of equities. Then, of course, uh, the advantages to owning equities versus bonds, you know, equities uh, appreciate. Uh, if the company is doing well, the equity uh, uh, equities return much more because the prices rise very fast. And since bonds are either fixed or very uh, regulated sort of uh, yields that come out of the bonds, the prices uh, do not fluctuate that much, but you know, you're sure of your yield if the company is doing okay. So, you know, starting with those kind of things, then, going into possibly the corporate side of things. I mean, cor I'm sorry, uh, going into possibly uh, standards that govern these or um, also use cases, which would then link back to Stan's uh, proposal to do use cases. So in other words, create a network that is not available anywhere else. I mean, there are places where you can find all this information, but they are all scattered. And this is more of a unifying concept. So the discussion we are having right now is whether to, uh, you know, how we can, um, how we can do the, 
Okay, so how we can do the link of the information. Yeah. Uh, using the tools that we have. We probably shouldn't go too far into it, but Bobby has brought up a good point that um, that um, you know, Gliffy is not maybe as clickable, but this, these are the tools that are available to us. And if anybody else has a knowledge of any other tool, I would be glad to try that. And money has also um, put something on chat which says that, you know, maybe the enterprise Ethereum token taxonomy, it will be useful. Um, the point is that the, you know, we are approaching this uh, from a let's say, a, the capital markets standpoint and where the token taxonomy stuff will get used is in pure digitization of everything and settlement, uh, digital settlement. So I'm going to put up uh, that particular um, uh, link that money, money, uh, introduced into the into the chat the rocket chat okay if you don't object to it um, so this is you know right now we are just talking about methods that we are adopting to do the taxonomy whether it'll be useful and so on and so forth so I would like to hear from each one of you whether uh, whether it'll be useful. So that's that's the first uh, thing. And I'm going to stop sharing this. I do have to say, Vipin, that was an uh, extensive work that was done on that and it's very comprehensive. So thank you for... Um... Well, actually it is probably not very comprehensive uh, because of the lack of these links and uh, Probably the classification is. Uh, but that's what we're going to work on. <laughs> okay, great. So the 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 point is some of those uh, some of those things that we mentioned uh, in terms of the classification, some of those bonds belong in multiple categories. So it may not be just a child parent relationship, but there may be more linkages between them. And in terms of bonds or any other product. Yeah, derivatives, any other product, it's always the actual covenants co uh, um, controlling them uh, and hence the risk versus the yield that you get from them that every investor is aware of. And how is, how is that transparency going to be maintained uh, is, is one of the biggest questions. Uh, in, in terms of, you know, discoverability of the of the parameters and the limits of each one of those instruments. Um, so, if someone else has something to say about this, I would be all ears. Hey, this is Dan. So, I think it's great to have this uh, taxonomy, especially if we're talking about the links to the. Uh, Hyperledger projects and use cases. Potentially, we can even include uh, links to the ongoing work. Since really the financial use cases, kind of a, taking it a little bit more general, will include a lot of relevant uh, information and work that was done. I, I think this taxonomy mind map is a perfect place to be this kind of a starting point to learn about not only the space, but also the work that's done you know, in the area of implementation. In terms of the taxonomy, that is only one aspect of taxonomy, meaning it's the types of bonds. The other one I was thinking of was the uh, life cycle 
uh, based taxonomy, meaning like what Natalia mentioned, you know, she's in origination, but then of course, she's also concerned about what happens to the instrument in terms of settlement, custody, and so on. So that would be another, another taxonomy, another way of looking at taxonomy just means classification. So these classifications can happen on different, uh, on multi-dimensional levels, uh, each one of them being separate, right? So. I kind of ran into the same uh, issue when trying to come up with the uh, set of the structure, I guess, for the use cases. Um, but realistically, well, at least in my experience, the starting with a product taxonomy is really the, uh, it feels like the really good start, the right, right, right starting point, in my opinion. Hey, there's a new person who joined, uh, who only shows up as iPhone. I don't know who that is. It's, it's Natalia as well. I'm on the two, on the two lines. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> so you're uh so, you're so I, I, go ahead i i agree on 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 also on maybe this is the first step but i think it would it would be great to have also the life cycle of the origination up until the settlement of the instruments okay so because actually I because because basically the the, the one of the biggest or one of the applications precisely of the technology is just to um, streamline the process. Yes. Um, in fact, Murali uh, shared with me a work by Oliver Wyman uh, under the EuroClear, uh, any, uh, you know, undertaken under Euroclear. And in that there is a there is a really kind of a life cycle based approach, which is also been on the page uh, on the project page uh, that I showed, right? Which is um, I can share that too, you know, and you guys can see what we're talking about here. Uh, so this is, I'm gonna share that screen, right? Um, can you see that? Yes. So they tried to, um, well, this is from 2016, by the way. So as far as blockchain years go, it is ancient. But I think the same problems are there everywhere. Uh, and they're talking about the securities, you know, the transactions, then the asset servicing, then the risk management. So here, you know, if you go on this path, uh, and then of course the derivatives being a separate uh, piece here. And uh, so that's, that's uh, one way of looking, another way of looking at taxonomy. Uh, it does not show the origination part. So, Anyway, I'm going to stop the share again, and then we can uh, talk about whether, you know. So, so these are the two views I have right now of of this, and possibly I'll develop my own diagram for the for the life cycle. Um, so now we can go down the list of projects. Like uh, before, I do that. Let's see whether Murali has anything to say about that life cycle thing. Because he's the one who shared that with me. Murali, are you, are you around? 
Yes, I am. Um, I am still digesting the whole thing. Um, and my interest was basically to see what, uh, you know, if, first of all, if it is relevant, like you said, right, the blockchain part of it itself is, I don't know how relevant it is, but this life cycle seems to be pretty, you know, pretty standard thing. And uh, I, I was hoping to elicit some uh, information and comments from the group here who are who are much more well versed with the actual mechanics of how this uh, how this thing works than I at this point. Uh, I'll make a more formal presentation of that later, but I definitely am interested in hearing from others. Right. How, how I, representative is this? Is this even close to what we would expect? Is this, you know, and how does it map to what we are trying to do? Uh, those are the interesting things that, uh, you know, once 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 we once we identify that, then we will we will be able to make that as a as a kind of uh, working life cycle model for us with any adjustments we we have to make. Okay, I guess. Uh, I think uh, Stan was trying. To, yeah, now we can hear you, Stan. I think you're breaking up a little. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I think it's a great uh, infographic that is kind of. Uh, anyway, I, I agree that of course the technology moved on quite a bit since it was created, but. The good thing that it's kind of talking about the capital markets, which have not changed, well, much in the last decade. Um, so it's, I think it's still very relevant and it creates a really nice, um, I feel like amalgamation of the product focus, the life cycle focus, and also it actually introduces directly the DLT use cases. So in a way, I think we can uh, use it as a uh, source of inspiration for uh, the uh, different um, taxonomies that we're uh, coming up with. Because in a way, what I've been trying to do for the use cases is come up with a use case taxonomy in a way. So this particular picture kind of uh, blends together different perspective, different views. Uh, it doesn't go too deep, but I think it's great to use as a kind of a holistic perspective in the space. So let's go back to that document. Uh, I mean, that picture. Um, one of the things that's missing here is, you know, obviously the origination part. It starts off with the transactions. And then it also looks at different ledgers for different um, types of assets. Maybe they are virtual ledgers, meaning virtually separated, uh, but uh, the point of it is something like a token taxonomy would sit somewhere in the cash ledger, right? I mean, money is that, that right. correct? Um, not only that, you still have the we talk about a cash ledger. You really have a digital assets, and somewhere yeah. in the asset ledger, the cash ledger is where the whole uh, token taxonomy you know, fans across. Yeah, I mean, even the collateral ledger, so, so to say. But you know, the point is they are representing this as multiple ledgers. It probably isn't. It is probably more of a uh, virtual distinctions between the different types of um, assets that are that are on the ledger, rather than, uh, you know, in, in fact, in the early days with R three, I remember being in a debate with some guys where they wanted to say, okay, there is assets, and then there is uh, cash. Uh, in my opinion. Uh, Everything is 
so there are only two primal uh, fundamental uh, sort of uh, notions. One is the notion of identity. Two is the notion of an asset, which includes cash or digital assets or any, any other kind of stuff. Um, in any of these uh, uh, ledgers. So that's where I started from, but you know, obviously these guys have gone and divided it into these different uh, aspects, which I don't have a trouble with, except for the fact that it can confuse people. Well, well in, in, in real world, I mean, you, you really see that as, as of today, you already have uh, JP Morgan issuing their own token, their own network or forum network. Um, you know, there's uh, rumors about other other uh, players in their own um, token, and also there's a separate company being formed, Finality International, by 14 other uh, capital market institutions. That's going to issue simple bank uh, back tokens. So you're going to see a, a lot of different asset networks popping up. Um, so uh, they, uh, they are going to be multiple different types of real physical networks where these assets originate and probably even uh, transact. Um, so that's the reality they're going to be. There's not going to be one, you know, a uniform, uh, ever present network where all of these are going to coexist. Uh, and also, you know, if uh, guys like Coda are introducing um, more towards a uh, a digital uh, or, or, or a uh, depository receipt, essentially mimicking any of these uh, physical assets uh, um, in their own network as logical assets. So you, we are going to be faced with lots of different types of tokens. I'm talking, about, I'm talking only about capital markets. Now we start inter integrating capital markets with uh, retail markets, even the minimal sense of stable, uh, stable coins because you need some form of uh, interaction uh, between public stable coins uh, at the very least uh, with uh, the capital market token. We are talking about lots of other different networks and um, the, any kind of solution as that indicates, uh, in, in reality, you're going to touch with a lot of different uh, asset networks. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, I uh, appreciate that there would be multiple, uh, multiple uh, sort of networks that have custody of those assets. So now that will segue neatly into your your project, which is about standards. Because if these assets have to interoperate with each other, then you need uh, agreement on certain standards. Uh, maybe uh, representation standards, maybe messaging standards, maybe uh, standards around, um, you know, uh, around identity. Like I was just going through the ASX chess replacement uh, uh, latest news, and they have done quite a bit of work on the ISO. 2022. So, Mani, uh, what what is your um, vision for the standards part of our project? Or, uh, first of all, I mean, do you are you willing to take it forward, or what's what's going on there? I mean, it would be very interesting to know. Um, yeah, sure. Um, I just want to see if there is, you know, a lot more interest in that. Obviously, it's the early days, so I'm trying to gauge, uh, you know, participants' interest. Um, maybe the coming weeks we get more interest. We can get, we can get, you know, I can put more stuff on that. Uh, but to give a broader, uh, broader view, um, there are yes, we can talk about standards, but then there are also the reality where, and uh, there are already, a, um, you know. A, a, there's, there's already an initiative. If you know, look at the uh, uh, Clearmatic, which is, uh, which is actually coming up with an enterprise level uh, asset 
and as a um, transfer mechanism between uh, the various ledgers, uh, and they have done some successful work on that. Uh, I can start, I think that will emerge as more or less as an interledger protocol, uh, at least on the uh, capital market side. Um, so, what kind of data standards they are going to propose is, is still up to so that they're based upon Ethereum. So, I just, you know, I'm not sure what standards are coming up. They're still going to open source a lot more of their work uh, pretty soon. Um, as regards pure data standards uh, between parties, our capital market participants, um, uh, so far, you know, uh, we've only seen uh, CDM, a common domain model, as a as a, as a, as a, as a sole contender. I'm not seeing anything else uh, being proposed. Uh, there are some separate initiatives. I know that six groups are looking at this. Um, the FTML is actually rolled, is, is being, you know, uh, uh, is kept only for messaging purposes, and is the CDM actually covers whatever FTML covers, plus uh, the uh, the securities uh, uh, securities uh, handling securities as well in the in the CDM standards. So uh, this is still an evolving you know, uh, evolving nature, uh, but at least uh, we can start documenting what's there in the marketplace, uh, and you know, and start. Uh, Dive into more in that. So I'll start putting some uh, some of these notes into the uh, into subgroup. So maybe I need some help of uh, how how would I go about navigating. So maybe we can talk, we can check it offline. Yeah, sure. Um, um, because actually, in this group, we have Stan, who is leading the effort on the architecture working group, the uh, interoperability uh, paper. Uh, and uh, we have done some modeling there about this. And also in Hyperledger, there is uh, Quilt, which is a ILP based protocol. So, you know, it's not clear that, you know, somebody like Clearmatics alone could uh, propose this. Uh, and the standard, the CDM is very powerful standard. Um, and uh, because it has uh, looked at things from a blockchain perspective uh, to update their older older protocol that they supported. So do you think that it will be uh, applicable to other products than just derivatives. Uh, yeah, already, already it has been extended to cover uh, uh, cover repos and security security finance. Um, we are actually um, extending it to cover specific to uh, uh, custody and settlement because that's where we think can be. It all starts from there, uh, from from the asset point of view. So we hope to. Yeah, they, they're still not fully open source and as CDM and the responding tools are the past of doing that. So once that's out, we will be contributing towards uh, uh, the whole CDM extended to uh, settlement and custody framework. And um, if that's something that uh, will cover uh, all the digital assets. And stuff. So that means it's, it's, up, it, 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 you know, it may not cover the asset life cycles yet, for example, it doesn't need to dwell, dwell too deep into, let's say, a bond servicing uh, or corporate actions yet. Uh, but you know, once you have um, custody frameworks and settlement frameworks set up, then it's a matter of you know people contributing towards those as well, and they, because they also involve uh, oracles and other uh, data standards that come together to a handle like that. Yeah, that is the other um, big uh, sort of uh, missing piece here because when we, when I did a uh, proof of concept based on open Ethereum uh, for a portfolio management product, price discovery was a very important aspect of it, which mean which meant that. We had to take care of at least simple corporate actions plus 
like stock splits and so on. Plus we had to do price discovery and the price discovery was almost daily. And the quality of that Oracle uh, was very important. And uh, I am in touch with the CEO of Chainlink, um, Sergey um, uh, Nazarov. I'm going to ask him to come and speak with us uh, one of these days because I think oracles are a very important aspect of this. Now, let's uh, move on to the, you know, we have five minutes. I'll just um, ask. Stan, who's on about his vision for the use case uh, situation. Hey, um, so like I mentioned, uh, just started working on it. Everybody is more than welcome to contribute. Um, so my thought was that we can start with coming up with a taxonomy, so to speak, of the use cases. Um, so it would be, I guess, a view on the same picture, right, the same domain from the point of view of the processes. So life cycle is, in a way, is one way to look at it, but the other view is the, uh, like the actual processes. What are the flow, the entire flows that have to happen in the capital markets, uh, different um, different areas. And so, uh, so far, my expertise is mainly in what me is doing. So that's uh, exchange traded, though I'm learning more and more about over the counter space. Definitely, I don't have much in the knowledge in the banking domain. So, please contribute. Um, so, I believe there are some great use cases in the. Uh, uh, in both the OTC and uh, ex exchange uh, created products. And so I'll kind of add my thoughts on those kind of high level domains so we can eventually, hopefully together, drill down into the in more detailed use cases uh, uh, that have to do with like some primarily from what we've seen that the post trade processes can benefit the most. Uh, in ODC space, there's a lot of uh, thought that deal negotiation, for example, can then benefit from the uh, blockchain. So, and just put it, we're just starting off, right? So I'm hoping to put in some structure, some ideas, and uh, kind of cover the space as best we can to uh, kind of, uh, highlight what are the uh, areas that can benefit the most from this technology. Um, yeah. This is this is Natalia here. So mm -hmm. uh, basically, I think there um, we could include also um, use cases of the use of the blockchain on the origination side, because there are already some um, some platforms that are using this technology to um, originate the securities in the market. So that is the step uh, before to the to the exchange traded. I'm not sure if I make myself clear. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the, so. The, the, the other part, um, the, the, there are some platforms that are using the technology and then putting in touch the in, investors with the issuers. Um, and uh, by the use of the blockchain and the smart contracts, they directly create the securities to be traded afterwards. So I think it's an interesting point to, to add as well. I completely agree. That sounds great. So please, uh, I've created the uh, page and the confluence. So it would be great if uh, you can contribute those uh, Have you use cases and thoughts and probably links to the, uh, to the projects if uh, those exist. Okay, Hi, it's Bobby. Um, I know that on um, the beginning of August, I'm meeting with some people from Hyperledger, um, especially from the healthcare SIG, on how to get standards for developing use cases. So we'll have like a template for you.
for all the use cases that you want to write up so that it'll be easy so that they're all consistent. Um, and one more thing I wanted to mention before we run out of time is if anyone is available Friday at 10, the public sector call is having Drummond Reed from the Sovereign Foundation give a presentation on um, identity on the blockchain. So if anybody's interested in that um, conversation, that's 10 o'clock on Friday in the public sector call. It's 10 o'clock, which time zone? Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. Or daylight, whatever. So this is uh, what I have so far. Like I said, uh, I think at this point, it's really all about uh, building up uh, the contributions from everyone. I think everyone has their uh, expertise. I think we've got a really good group here. So we should be able to beef up this um, uh, set of use cases. And uh, it would be great to have a template. So I'll be so looking forward to that. By the way, we have, um, we, we can run over a few minutes because we are on a completely independent Zoom channel. So, uh, no, there's no need to cut off right away, but obviously people have their lives. Um, yes, I do have to leave Vipin, but thank you for hosting and I will talk to you soon. All right. Yeah. Um, same, same here Vipin, thank you. Th thanks, everyone. Uh, so we'll uh, keep collaborating on the wiki page, pages, and also on email. I'll try to send out a brief note of our, you know, of our call. I will also uh, upload the audio and the video in case you want to listen to yourselves talk. <laughs> But, you know, it's more for the people who did not attend the meeting. I hope the recording quality is good enough. Uh, but uh, please, you know, if, if there are any closing thoughts, let us hear it. Otherwise, we, you know, we end the call. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye now.